three, two, one. Hello, this is Dr. Denny Pizarnski coming, coming to you from Balance Chiropractic and Rehab. This is uh, Dr. Dan's Power Hour, where we talk about health and, and business and whatever else may be applicable. Uh, today on our podcast, we have Dr. Jay Greenstein and a good friend of mine. He's also been uh, a coach and a mentor of mine. Uh, he is the CEO of the Kaizo Health Companies, a, multi, a multi-location chiropractic rehabilitation and wellness practice. He's also the founder of the Kaizo Clinical Research Institute, a 501c3, which runs clinical studies to identify best practices. Dr. Greenstein is the immediate past chairman for the Clinical Compass and the Federation of International Chiropractic Sports. And I know he's very passionate um, about uh, chiropractic and moving it forward in in healthcare. Uh, He's also the part of, uh, also World Olympian Scholarship Program. He's also the World Olympian Scholarship Program Chairman. Dr. Greenstein is also the CEO of Kazenovate, a technology and consulting firm that helps doctors of chiropractic grow their practices through technology. He's a big technology buff. Dr. Greenstein is sought out, is a sought out international speaker and consultant teaching clinical guidelines, leadership, and the and business management. Dr. Greenstein sits on multiple advisory boards in healthcare and technology. And today we're welcome Dr. Jay Greenstein to our podcast. Jay, how are you doing? What's up, brother? It's great to see you, man. <laughs> it's great to see you, too. That's a long introduction. You've done a lot of things. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so where do we start? Well, um, you know, this, these are interesting times. And, um, you know, I think for the audience, um, maybe one of the most important places to start is just um, rethinking what's happening in healthcare today. You know, it's funny when we rebranded because our company name used to be Sport and Spine Rehab and we we rebranded to Kaizo. um, Our tagline is now rethink, rebuild, restart. And I don't know if there's a better time for that tagline, like literally rethinking how healthcare is executed, rebuilding, quite frankly, our society and um, and restarting in a way that is different and better than it was before. Yeah, so something... uh bringing forth something new uh, out of the chaos that has formed, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's been, um, it's been an interesting journey because from the beginning, I, I've, I've really tried to, to position my mindset in a way that finds opportunity in this. You know, we all have the opportunity to, to take a look at, at what happens in our lives and, and we have perspective. We have we have our own history, our own experiences, uh, but we also have the ability to, to really shape what we want our present and future to look like. And for me, I was like, all right, this is going to suck ass. There's going to be a lot of problems. Um, there's going to be lots of challenges. Um, I expect that our practice volume will go down, and it did. We, we were down at our lowest point, 80%. Um, wow. Yeah, but, but with, every, you know, with every challenge comes opportunity. And, uh, and I, I just focus my mindset on, okay, what can I learn? How can we be better? And what can we do to support our communities and our other colleagues to help, help people get through this crisis? And so I just went to work, man. And, um, and what was really interesting on the tech side of the business, we ended up adding customers, which I never really thought would happen during this time. We rolled out mm-hmm. an online course. People are buying it, which again, you know, during a time when things are kind of tight, you wouldn't expect it to happen. But Is I think the- when- the uh, training course like the yeah. um, rehab? Yeah. Uh, it's not rehab, actually. It's called the Chiropractic Entrepreneur Framework. So what okay. I did is I took the best from all the business books that I've read, uh, my experience uh, just in running a practice and in coaching, and put it onto a 20-hour, I'm sorry, 20-module um, online course with a workbook, this 10-page workbook that allows people to literally work on the business and not just be working in the business. And totally. it's a step-by-step process where they just you know focus on culture people key performance indicators process 
operational problem solving and growth. And that's, that's the course. There's also a bonus section at the beginning on leadership, which mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about. And um, it's just a way to help other chiropractors and healthcare providers, again, rethink their business and start working on the business and not just in the business. Totally, yeah, I've had to do um, the same thing as I started. I've been in chiropractic for 12 years now, but I recently just started my own location and- Congrats, congrats. <laughs> thank you, and you were part of that. You helped me, uh, you, you helped me in the beginning and, and, and we're very supportive throughout the whole process, um, which really started about two years, or it was two or three years ago when like, I first met you and Mike Reed and Matt Loop, and I didn't even know <laughs> who you guys were. <laughs> and I was just uh, trying to find, get out there and, and figure things out. And you've all helped me very much uh, in these last three years. And even through this uh, pandemic is when we started, one of the things that, one of the ways that we pivoted is like we started this podcast because we wanted to help our community. And we thought we would have, or what we did was we had other local small businesses come on here, as well as people from around uh, the United States and the globe uh, to help people rethink and restart. Uh, like what you are doing, because everybody's in the same boat right now. When I look out my window at the strip malls across from us, like three or four businesses have closed, the one next to me is gonna close, like it's yeah. not good. And it's gonna keep rippling. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we have the same experience here. So for the, for the viewers, you know, I live in Washington, DC. I live about six blocks from the nation's capital. And, um, you know, we've had restaurants that have been here. I've been living here for 15 years and, and we had one of our most favorite restaurants closed down. They're not going to make it through this particular crisis. Yeah. And I agree with you, Dan, we're, we're all in this together. We've got to do whatever we can to support our communities and, and specifically small businesses to help them. Um, thrive and, and even, you know, we've even become more aware how, of how important it is to support minority owned businesses as well. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that's going on in our, oh, yeah. in our country today, sure, we have an opportunity also. to really do some good work. And, um, and that's what we're, we're setting out to do. That's what we continue to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tell us more about, well, tell me a little bit about how you got started in um, chiropractic. Well, you're, in chiropractic as well as on your entrepreneurial um, history because sure i know you have about 10 or 12 different things going on at once um and i i i'm a little bit younger than you and i'm starting to be that same way so it's like it's just kind of interesting uh learning and watching like your programs and how you've evolved so i'm curious about how that has come about as well as um, yeah. your new program Absolutely. So um, I started um, in chiropractic because of my mom. She was a chiropractic patient. <laughs> when I was growing up, she was in multiple car accidents. And all the medical doctors would do would give her drugs. And uh, it wasn't good for her. And it wasn't helping her. And she finally found chiropractic. And I don't know exactly how she found it, but she did. And, um, and at one point when I was in college, actually it was the middle of my junior year at the University of Maryland. I was home for Christmas break. And my mom and dad and I were having lunch and she's like, you know what, you should come and talk to my chiropractor because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a business major at that point, but I had no idea what I was going to do. Okay. I was, I was going to be graduating early. So I went and I spoke to him. His name is, it was Jim Flood, really good guy. And I'll never forget. He said three things to me. He's come like, a little bit closer to the... Sure. How's that? Is that better? That's better. Yeah. So he said, chiropractic is a great profession. He's like, first and foremost, you help a lot of people. Secondarily, you make a nice living. And third, you get to work for yourself. And he handed me this book written by Lou Sportelli called Introduction to Chiropractic. And I read it cover to cover that night. And that's when I knew this is something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was, uh, it was a life-changing experience because it resonated with me that, that so many conditions that were being treated by the medical system were just symptom, sy symptom treatments. You know, they weren't actually directed at the cause. And what the great thing about chiropractic was that you were getting to the cause of people's spinal conditions and you were fixing it and you were doing it naturally. And, um, and, you know, obviously I could see the joy and the love that he had for his practice, his profession, his patients, and that was just very inspiring. So I changed my major in the middle of my junior year. I went straight through summer school for two years in a row in order to meet all the pre-med, pre-chiropractic course loads, you know, the chemistries, the physics, all that yep. kind of stuff. Yep, sciences. Yep, the sciences. And then I, I started chiropractic school um, in, um, in 19, 
Let's see, 1988. It was, the, it was the fall of 1988. I graduated in the spring of 92. I went out to work for the Olympic team chiropractor, the guy who was the Olympic team chiropractor for the Seoul Olympics. His name was Jan Corbin. He was oh, wow. out in California, and I worked for him for a year. We became great friends, but I knew that I'm an, I'm an East Coast guy. Like I Come closer to you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I'm an East Coast guy. I needed, to, I needed to be close to my friends, close to my family. And so um, I decided to move back and start my own practice. And that was the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. At a certain point, about 10 years into practice, I realized that in order for me to create greater impact, I had to have more providers that could take care of more patients. And so I brought in my first associate and that worked well. And then I opened up my second practice and from there it just spiraled. Ended up opening up multiple practices and we continued to grow. Learned lots of very uh, important business and, and life lessons in going through that process because there were many more failures than successes, many more. Um, but that's how you learn and grow. And quite honestly, if I had I not had those failures, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, those failures made me a very gritty, resilient, persever persevering individual. And that has served me well. And, and I think during I'd say persevering is the key word there. Like if you're yeah. an entrepreneur and a chiropractor, because it's one of the only, it's one, it's one of the medical professions where you have to be an entrepreneur if you want to be successful. Yeah. And not everybody is an entrepreneur. Not everybody is persevering. There's not that many people that are you're like the one percent that are success or are super successful in chiropractic, um, but the ones that are are very perseverant, determined, goal oriented, um, and and just work their asses off. Yeah, and are um, there was efficient. there's some really really good science around uh, the number one predictor of success. It was a study that was published by Angela Duckworth out of University of Pennsylvania, and um, and and the study found that grit. Uh, which is technically the intersection of passion and perseverance is the number one predictor of success. So if you're passionate about something, and I know you are just as passionate as I am about chiropractic, and you can persevere, that's a great predictor for your present and your future success. And so, you know, we, and, and what's interesting is you can take a grit score. It's online. If you look up grit scale, um, well, there is find it, grit, grit scale. Okay, right, not like grits, scale. the ones that you eat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Grit. Um, and you can take, you can take, it's a 10 question assessment and it will give you a benchmark score. And then there are things that you can do to develop what's called a growth mindset, which will allow you to develop greater levels of grit over time. Um, so Angela Duckworth developed this concept of grit and Carol Dweck developed this concept of a growth mindset. And those are really important concepts and strategies to, to really help people, entrepreneurs, business owners, chiropractors, um, I would say guarantee their ability to be successful in practice. Okay, yeah, that's great. I haven't heard of that one before, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that tonight. But yeah, I'm pretty really sure good. mine's pretty high. If you, could, if you ask intern Nate what he's seen from me in the last eight months. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. What, I, what I've seen from you, I mean, I've seen you go from a guy who was working out of somebody else's shop to to starting your own practice, man, and especially during the hardest time and doing a podcast and doing all kinds of cool things. And I, I think that's just a testament to your character. Yeah, and like a couple of really cool things did happen in the last couple of weeks. It's been uh, trying, uh, there's lots of failures and there's lots of obstacles in, in uh, being an entrepreneur, but like um, my, uh, my office manager and then I have a, a chiropractic assistant slash massage therapist, and they both, um, <laughs> they both, like com commented on like how hard I work, and that's where they want to work here. And like, and like uh, that really meant a lot to me. And, and, and internet over here has said the same thing too. And because it's been it's been quite the struggle, like starting <laughs> starting up right three months into into a pandemic, and <laughs> and trying to just figure things out. And, hey, look, man. At this point, anything else is easy, right? Like you make it through this period. The rest <laughs> That's of it's what I like, figured. The rest of it's, hey. <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned hard work, though, because there's a gr there's a great quote by the famous football coach Vince Lombardi who said, "The only place that success comes before work 
is in the dictionary. Yeah, that's true. I, I would totally agree. And like, that's some of the things that, well, that's what most like, or not like most, but a lot, I think that's where a lot of businesses fail. Like they don't know how, or entrepreneurs fail. It's like they don't know how much work it takes to get any, um, just any, any little, in, if you want to start selling a certain product uh, online, or if you want to start a podcast or a, a personal training in your office or something like that, you have to invest a lot on the front end to get the payoff in the back end, like a lot. Yes. And yes. invest in your employees. And, and a lot of people just go to work. They go to work, get paid, get a paycheck, come home. They go, they go on vacation, paid vacations. They get insurance. Um, but that's not what an entrepreneur is like. like you, you have to earn that. <laughs> and it takes 100%. years. It takes yeah. years and years in the beginning. It does. But that the payoff, the, it's, it's risk reward, right? The risk yeah. is significantly greater. It is. But the reward is also significantly greater. Yes. And I... I I put my trust in my own future more than I would put my trust in somebody else determining my future. And that's, oh, totally. that's just my mojo. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I, I have more of a creative mindset and I do, I come from like a, well, my dad like grew up in a farm, so like a farm background and things like this. So all you do is work. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so it's just like, I, I don't, I'm not good at like, I have a lot of ideas and I want to, to, I want to execute them. And if I'm an employee of somebody, I can't do that. Even when I was sharing space, I thought I had my own practice, but I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. And now that I got into my own business, my own practice, it's almost like Pandora's box is opened. And like every idea I've had is trying to come out and I'm trying to scale my like brain back because there's almost too much. Yeah. And, but it's exciting. It's exciting. Uh, and, I, and I will do it all, but it takes time. And it takes it does. It you know, takes... one of the best lessons I learned was from our Dean of Students when I was in chiropractic school. And, I'll never forget this. It was my third trimester. And man, I was struggling. I had done well my first two trimesters. Third trimester, I met this girl. You know, I was all distracted. You know, she, she That's kind of had, had this thing back at, She had this boyfriend back at home. And then we, we were trying to figure out, like, what do we do here? And she ended up breaking up with him. And we ended up starting a date. But it was a cluster. And, and you know, he, he was super cool. Uh, his name was Dan Driscoll. And he he said, he's like, come on, let's go out for some beer. So we went across the street from the college. There was yeah. like dive bar. And he bought, bought a couple pitches of beer. And we just sat there and just talked. And, and I'll never forget what he said to me. He's like, he's like, because I was like, I want to I want to publish a research paper before I graduate chiropractic school. I want to graduate with honors and this, that, and the other. And his, you know, all these ideas. And he looked at me and he's like, Jay, he's like, one thing that you need to learn is like, you need to learn patience. And I looked at him, I'm like, what the F are you talking about? Like, I'm already behind. Do you want me to exactly. get more patient? Exactly. You I want feel me like, more that patient? like, like, uh, listen, I'm happy about drinking some free beer right now, but like, you're really kind of confusing me. But he's like, listen, he's like, I want you to trust me. He's like, I need you to really think about the concept of having patience. And I was like, all right. So, you know, over the next several days, several weeks, I mean, I really like, I dug into that concept and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to give myself a little bit of a break. Maybe I need to, 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 you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time and not worry about how big the elephant is at this point. And I did, and I got out of that funk and it was a rough trimester, but I did get out of that funk and I was able to achieve the goals that I set. Uh, from for myself in chiropractic school and and it all worked out. So That's so awesome. patience as an entrepreneur is a is a is a funny thing to think about, but it's a really important thing to have. Yeah, it, it, it it's definitely a skill that you need to that you build and and you build it. Unfortunately, I have like to doing things too fast and and overwhelm myself and having things drop off and. And realize it, 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 what's really helped me though is having like some some of these uh, younger people like uh, my uh, intern Nate. Uh, we call him, we call him an intern, but he does a lot of hard work uh, for us. And um, 
a lot of PR stuff. But it's it's watching them like do the th- same things that you did and then be like, whoa, 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 wait, we got to slow down. Like, just like that doctor did for you. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I got to listen to what I'm teaching. I got to, I have to follow what I preach. Like, and I've always been like that in healthcare too. Like, I don't want to be the overweight doctor that's telling somebody to lose weight, you know? Like, yeah, you, for sure. You, you got to practice what you preach or else it, 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 it's just, it's not, I don't know, it's not noble is what I think. Yeah, and you bring up a really good point about people, you know, and, um, you know, I, you, you'll experience this as you, as you continue to grow your practice and do great things, but ultimately at the end of the day, the ability for you to succeed as an entrepreneur is directly related to the people that you work with. And, you know, you know, Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, talked about it. It was chapter two and it was titled First Two, Then What? It is literally all about your people. And, you know, for me, I've been extremely blessed. Like I've had amazing people that I've worked with throughout my career. My leadership team right now is like unreal. Like they're like crazy smart, dedicated, um, hardworking. They can execute a strategy. They can also tell me to rein it in. Like, yeah. you know, well, that, too, many yeah. ide- too many ideas at once. Like, okay, Jay cut that shit out, like, hold on, like, we got too much to do as it is, you have to put that idea in your pocket until next quarter. But it's good, because you want people to check you like that, you want people to be honest with you and transparent with you. When you've got a team like that, that's hardworking, dedicated, smart, committed, um, it allows you to do the things, allows you to create, it allows you to get to goal, because you are leveraging your unique abilities while they leverage theirs. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I'm a very curious person, so I like watching to see like what their unique abilities are, and then and then my brain starts going again. Like, how can I use that as a tool to to do this, or to do that, and and it it's great. Um, like, I guess I always I'm a thinker, so I think a lot, and I never think people were be really thinking like the same things as me or anything like that. And um, and and then I I have the, the these younger employees that come up with these great ideas or make these mature actions. And I'm like, oh, like I was thinking about this over the weekend when I was just trying to rest and relax because I've uh, burnt myself out a bit. And I was like, man, they're young. If I if I would have thought that when I was 25 or 23 or 21, uh, man, I'd be way ahead of where I'm at right now. Like, like you said, like, I, <laughs> you always feel behind when you're an entrepreneur. That, that feeling doesn't, doesn't necessarily change. I think that yeah. happens to all of us. Yeah. And the important part is not to compare yourself to others too. Because not I to compare to yourself that. to others because everybody's different and they've had their own experiences and, and realizing that, as Ryan Holiday would say, the obstacle is the way, like embracing the obstacles that we come up with because we learn and grow from them. And also not beating yourself up. Like, because sometimes we can talk more harshly to ourselves than than we would ever talk to anybody else. So giving yourself the permission to make a mistake or not be where you want to be, like you're allowed to give yourself permission to be like, okay, you know, I'm not there yet, but I'll get there because you know you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. I totally agree with you. And that, that's a great book. I've listened to the, the audio book at least about 10 times. And, and you're the one who sent that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I got his other book, his newest book too. It's like, what is it? Some, silence. Stillness is the key. Stillness is the key. Yeah, that's a really great one also. Yeah. I, like, I like his stuff. There's a lot of philosophy in it. And I like philosophy quite a bit. But applicable, right? Not just like you know, way out there, philosophical nonsense. It's so applicable to our lives. Yeah, because everybody goes through it. That's right. Uh, But, you know, uh, everybody goes through it, but not everybody grows through it. Oh, dude, you should tag that. That should be like a, that should be like an Instagram post tomorrow. Everybody goes through it, but not everybody grows through it. I love that. That's great. That's right. That's true. You know, I want to see that on Instagram tomorrow. All right, internet, write that down. <laughs> everybody goes through it, but not everybody grows through it. Extremely Boom, get drop up. the mic. <laughs> drop the mic. Yeah. Stop the podcast. We're done. Right, we're done. It's a wrap. Yeah, it's over. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>
You just go to bed. <laughs> that was great, dude. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's another thing I found too, like just working on my own. Like before you always have somebody that's telling you what to do. Like even in the other office that I was at, like it was, wasn't my system. And now I have my, uh, I'm, I'm creating my own system. And it, it sounds, I don't know if it sounds like facetious or not, but like I'm smarter than I thought I was. That's what I realized. <laughs> A lot yeah. smarter than I thought I was. And can problem solve uh, better than I thought that I ever could uh, through, so, through the different trials that I've been through in just the last six to eight months and through all, all of the pandemic and like I've been through it just like I went through a, like a horrible breakup and uh, and a lot of things just like one thing after another after another after another but like my office manager just like your leadership team is like one day at a time we got this one day at a time we got every single day I was like how does she know like how does she know <laughs> I just like it's odd but it's awesome it is awesome yeah yeah it's really great. sounds like you got a gem there totally yeah i have had many people tell me that yeah so and she's totally all in and so she she's uh she's the rock of this of this business it's good for you great. you yeah. deserve it yeah thank you thank you i appreciate it so let's talk about let's talk a little bit more about um well you have five or six clinics in Virginia there. I've visited one before. They're very well, four clinics. Yep, four clinics. we had five, but we actually shut one down due to COVID. Oh, you did, okay. Oh man, Yep. sorry to hear that. That's okay. You still got four. Still got four, I'm, I'm, <laughs> cool, I'm cool with four. I and, mean, just because, and just because we shut it down, you know, in that location doesn't mean that we're not open to being open somewhere else. But yeah. for that particular location, uh, although we were busy, the economic, the unit economics were just not great. Um, mm -hmm. The payer mix was not great, and it just it, it became a pure business decision. You know, you got to put your ego aside and be like, "Hey, there's another location that's better than this one, and we just we just need to find it." So, yep. And I I just moved. I moved from I don't know. I moved ten miles to my new location, and it's ten times better than my old one. Like like that's the great. diversity the diversity of people and like the payers and just the people that come in are a lot easier to work with. You know, it's a different demographic and it's in far North Dakota where it seems like everybody's almost the same. It seems like it, but it's, it's not, you know, you just get hearing your practice so much that you don't get out to the outside world uh, yeah. at, at the beginning. So let's talk a little bit more about um, uh, your program that you come up with. I'm, I'm interested in this and, and, and want to hear more about it. So it's 20 modules. It's got a lot of, a lot of it's, information. It's 20 modules. It, it ends up being about four and a half hours worth of content, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you combine the video training with the workbook, which is about 10 pages, I estimate it will probably take the, you know, the, the, the chiropractor entrepreneur 12 weeks to finish the whole course. Okay. Uh, because it, it, again, it's not just watching a video and be like, oh, that was interesting. It's like watching a video and then using the workbook to actually work on the business. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's everything from, you know, vision, mission, values, uh, understanding how to hire and, and train on board uh, and have, you know, performance conversations with your, with your team, building the right culture, understanding what key performance indicators, KPI, KPIs, data, metrics you need, the difference between a leading indicator and a lagging indicator, um, oh, everything wow. that you need to know about operational problem solving, um, how, do you, how do you tap into growth opportunities? So, you know, I, I just took 26 years of experience, all the business books that I've read and listened to, the coaching that I've done with other clients, and just combined it with, um, with you know, a, a level of organization that I thought would really help a chiropractor go through a process to, to, become, to go from just a chiropractor who owns his own practice to actually a chiropractic entrepreneur, which is different, right? Yep, you, that's you the next that level. Earlier. That's the next level. Because a chiropractic entrepreneur has freedom, right? A chiropractor who's got his own practice may or may not have freedom, mm -hmm. but I've got freedom. Like I just went away from my anniversary. My girlfriend took me away for 10 days and I literally can work anywhere in the world. If I want to go to Beijing, I can work at Beijing. If I want to go to, to uh, Sydney, Australia and work in Australia, I can, I can do that. So I have a certain amount of freedom that 
not every chiropractor has. So oh. this is really helping chiropractors understand what it takes to build high quality, ethical, evidence-based practice to generate freedom. Because freedom is what we all want. I think we all want it. Uh, at least the chiropractic entrepreneur wants it. Maybe not every chiropractor, but the chiropractic entrepreneur definitely wants it. So, so could a regular business person use this training or is it just tailored to chiropractor? I'll tell you what. So I, I've had a couple of friends watch, watch, you know, take the course and they're like, dude, why'd you call it chiropractic entrepreneur framework? They're like, you could, th this could be any, this could be any entrepreneur. This could be any business. And yeah. so the answer to that question, and somebody said to me literally two days ago, you need to retape it and just make it like the entrepreneur framework. But um, yes, if, if someone, first of all, anybody, who, anybody who's in healthcare, it, they, anybody's dealing with patients, 100%, they can relate to it. I may say chiropractic, but it could be optometry. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, or dentistry. Um, or whatever. It, 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 very, the business is run, the models are the same. Yeah, very applicable. Um, and, and to be honest, I mean, anybody who is, is running their own business who wants freedom can apply this framework the same exact way. Dealing with people, hiring people, training them, onboarding them, rewarding them, having performance conversations, that's applicable to every single business. Creating the right culture, applicable to every single business. Having a meeting structure that's, that's regular, that provides traction for the business applicable to any company. KPIs, mm -hmm. data, metrics. I mean, I talk about things that relate specifically to our business. Mm -hmm. You know, new patients, billings, revenue, um, all the leading metrics. Oh, that's that we just that. went through the last two weeks. We had a big issue with that because we, we have a off for, we have a billing person, but they're in Florida. We're in North Dakota. Outsourced, yeah. Outsourced. And so there is a lot of miscommunication. And so we went back, it, I think I had at least six, seven hours of meetings to figure out like everything that was going on. And like, it wasn't fun for anybody, but it had to be done. <laughs> yeah, you and I may want to have a separate conversation after, after, this, after this podcast, but because yeah. um, I've, I've had those experiences and they're not fun. And typically when things like that are uncovered, they don't get better, they get worse. You just don't know about them. So just, just something to think about. Yeah, that was about. the big thing was like, we need verification. We need verification of every single thing. It's that and, le and you have to understand the leading metrics, the metrics that you're looking at to understand where your claims are in processing. Like I look at that every single day with my practice. Mm -hmm. I get a report that comes to me that says, this is where my claims are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in process. There's, you know, missing documentation, like whatever. Uh, and and I, so even before, even it's five steps before the claim gets processed. I know what's happening at the beginning. So if there's a problem, if there's a bottleneck at the beginning, I can get that resolved. So the claims process cleanly and I know that I can get paid. Yeah. But these are all the things that I talk about in the course. I mean, this is totally. really what it takes to run a business that, that runs essentially on its own. And totally. I think for any entrepreneur and certainly any chiropractic entrepreneur, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about it, but not many do it. It's not easy. I mean, it's, it's really not easy. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, make this anything other than completely authentic. Like we've had, we, no matter where you are in the business landscape, like you're, you're an elite chiropractic entrepreneur, you're just getting started. There's always challenges. We have challenges in our business still, you know, yeah. however, the ability for us to be able to solve those challenges, for us to be able to get through a crisis like this, for us to be able to plan for what's next, is so different because we are literally in the pro we're in a proactive state most of the time. Do we have problems that we have to deal with? Sure. But if you're in a reactive state the entire time, you're pretty much effed. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. what building practice infrastructure, that's what the CEF is building the practice infrastructure, that's what it's all about, and that's what the CEF teaches. Okay. So how do we like do you how how do we get a hold of this C CEF? Yeah. So if you, <laughs> is, that, if you, is that the term? You have the well, CEO. Every, everything's an acronym these days, right? So it's the Chiropractic yeah. Entrepreneurial Framework. Um, <laughs> so if you go to Kaizenovate, K A I Z E N O V A T E, Kaizenovate.com, on the home page, you'll see there's a little widget there. You can just click on that, it'll take you right to the landing page <laughs> where folks can register. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, do you, do you want to talk about costs on the on the show, or do you want want people just to find out there? 
Sure. So um, what we can do, and, and I can send this to you later, is I can provide a discount code for all of your listeners, Dan. Totally. Uh, but, but, but typically, what, and what we're doing is we're charging $199 a month for the course because we know it's going to take some time to get through it, but we're also adding other modules. There's a whole clinical module that we're adding, which should be done no later than the end of July. And then there's another level of leadership training that's coming that should be, um, should be there Q3. So we're constantly adding modules. So it's basically a subscription service. So you can take the modules that you want at any time. And when there's new content, you can, you can access that. Um, but what we can do is we can provide a really good discount for all of your listeners. So your tribe can get a significant discount. But right now it's $199 totally. a month. What do you say, $199? $199 a month, yeah. And that's, that's pretty cheap for all the information he's get, that, he's, that, that you are, um, that you've created. Uh, I, 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 during the pandemic, I realized that we need that structure, we need that leadership. And, um, and I was looking for it and I ended up signing up for the Dave Ramsey's Entre Leadership course, which is a lot of similar things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it has a lot of the similar things that, that you've taught me and it, they teach in, track, in the traction books. And, yep. um, and that's 250 a month. And that's not geared towards chiropractors. That's geared right. towards just general businesses. But uh, um, so 199, and if you get a discount, that is very, very, um, it's, it's very affordable, and we, definitely we, will save you thousands of money. Well, it's it'll save you, but also like you mentioned the word investment, which I think is a really important word. So if you let's say it takes you three months to get through the course, and you've invested six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I would I would guarantee you you would make a 10x return on that investment at least just Can you by, your money back sure why not <laughs> somebody takes the course and they don't get a 10x return on my investment on their investment all right you said it here I'll give them their money back <laughs> absolutely and you know me like I will I know you will like, I, I totally you. will I know um, I have no issue with that whatsoever if anybody <laughs> wants their money back boom got it no problem awesome See what we're creating right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Are you, I know you were doing an app for chiropractors too. You still doing that? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So we, um, so, you know, I love technology and I think technology. Oh, yeah, we got to go into technology also. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, technology, the intersection of technology and healthcare is, is, is emerging. It's growing rapidly. It's changing rapidly. And first and foremost, I want, chiropractors and other healthcare providers to be educated on, on the technologies that exist because the implementation of those technologies are going to change the way that we practice healthcare. But, but what we did is we decided that we really wanted to engage patients in ways like they've never been engaged with before in a chiropractic mm -hmm. or even a healthcare practice at large. And where are people every single day? They're mm -hmm. on their phones. Yes. And we know that 90% of people who use their smartphones are on apps. They're not really searching on mobile browser oh, sorry. Oh, sorry they're not searching on their mobile browser and so what we what we and we looked at the clinical literature there's really good scientific evidence about 38 randomized controlled clinical trials that looked at the use of mobile phones and treatment adherence you know if people are if, if there there are apps that are out there that help improve medication adherence so we took that information and that knowledge and we said we can build an app and we can create some gamification make it fun for the patient inside the app and that improves their treatment adherence which then improves their outcome but also improves the doctor's income would this be a win across the board and so we built it and that was our hypothesis we built it and you know we have a research foundation and so we analyzed the data and in a 90-day period we had 510 patients download the app and 453 who did not the patients who downloaded the app had an increase of adherence by 36 percent really 36%. And so, and by the way, CVS built an app for medication adherence mm -hmm. and they had an adherence increase of anywhere between six and 10%. So when we looked at the data, we we're like, wow. holy crap. Like we built something that has a lot of utility. And so I was like, okay, could this help other chiropractors? You know, I have a lot of friends in chiropractic, obviously. And I'm like, maybe this could help Tom, or maybe this could help Dan, like mm -hmm. who else could this help? So I reached out to a, a couple of really close friends of mine. And I said, we're going to build you an app for free. I want you to tell me what you think. And we built it and they loved it. And it has all mm -hmm. kinds of features and functionality, but 
it really serves three purposes. The first purpose is we can improve treatment adherence through gamification by rewarding patients for good behavior. The second important feature is that we built in an assessment that has a clinical algorithm built, built in. So any person can download the app from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. They can take an assessment about their pain or their condition, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it will spit out specific exercise videos based on their condition and or will prompt them to schedule an appointment with your practice's app. So because it's built for the private practice, private practitioner. So it'd be like yep. Dr. Dan's practice app. So they would download your app. They would take the assessment. They would get videos. But if the condition was severe enough, it would prompt them to schedule an appointment with, you know, with your practice. What we found is that up to 22% of the people that are downloading the app are not our patients. And we are getting upwards of- the app. You did? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to recreate it. <laughs> we can build it for you, Dan. Don't try and recreate the wheel. Um, but, what we, but what we found is we've gotten up to, like in our best week pre-COVID, we had eight new patients in a two week period. I mean, that's gold in and of itself. And oh, yeah. every week we're getting lead gen now. Like, and what we've done is we've mined the data and we've learned from our customers. We have now 26 customers and we're learning from our customers and they're saying like, hey, can we get this as lead gen? And we're like, sure. And so people who are downloading our app, we now, they're warm leads. We can now reach out to them and offer them something that would bring them into the practice. Could be telehealth or it yep. could be a free consultation or, or a paid consultation, but there's ways yep. to reach out to them. And then the third element of the app, which is really helpful, <coughs> is convenient. Our patients can do all their home exercises right on their phone. They can mm -hmm. schedule an appointment on their phone. They can pay their bill through their phone. So a way to create convenience for patients, which is what they want, especially now, they can do telehealth through their phone. Um, a way to create convenience for our patients is a game changer. And we've got like some pretty high level chiropractors that are our, our early adopter customers and the feedback that we're getting is remarkable, like remarkable, because they're getting remarkable feedback from the patients that have downloaded it and used it. So, and this is just the beginning. There's, there's a lot more in this story, but that, those are the basics. Okay. Yeah. I've looked, I've looked through it and I, I actually did have one, a beta app created. Um, but we, again, I had so many, so many things going on that I haven't been able even to like, take the time to uh, take the time to look at it. That's what I was going to, I was going to be on intern Nate's list to, to start working with that a little bit, but. Yeah. I mean, you've got so much going on. Like you want a certain amount of infrastructure and patient volume for it to be worth your while. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when it's right, we can chat. Definitely. 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 Um, and I know that like I do a lot of rehab and you, your clinics do a lot of rehab and seven, and this Statistics that I've read is 70% of patients that do rehab are, are assigned a rehab uh, a plan or a home exercise program will, will not do it at home. And, and that's why at my clinic, we do it in the, in the clinic for at least six weeks. So you get into the habit of doing it. Yeah. And, that, and, and that seems to work. But most like physical therapy clinics, hospitals, things like that, they just they, they give people a few pieces of paper and that's it and it's horrible it's horrible absolutely horrible and they say oh i've done physical therapy I'm like no you haven't no you haven't and even if you've just done physical therapy you need more than that yeah you need chiropractic like you need muscle work like you have to integrate it all to really get better and and that's an evidence-based statement right that's not an opinion like we know from the evidence that that is in fact true multimodal care works better than just one type of care alone mm -hmm. so just getting exercises doesn't work as well as exercises and adjustments like that that the evidence clearly supports that i mean that was published in lancet uh published in the annals of internal medicine like it that is clear um and that's, and that's what the healthcare system is there's one person for every different thing and it's, it's siloed. made people less healthy yeah it's siloed you know? and, and what, what's yeah. great about What's great about chiropractors like you and, and what we do in our practice is we incorporate the best evidence across disciplines and implement that for our patients to get the best possible outcomes. And that's, and that's really what, that, that's what makes the difference in terms of, you know, patients, you know, doing well in care and patients not. So, mm -hmm. the, the, and the home exercise compliance piece is actually a really important one. And you're right. 
home exercise compliance is really poor. And that's why, and we've done some human centered design studies in our practices with our patients. And we've asked them about the app. Like, what do they like most about it? And of course they love the rewards because they get like little free gifts when they reach yeah, milestones. I saw that, yeah. But, but they also you? talked about yeah. the fact that they love the home exercises being on their phone because they can do it anywhere. Yeah. They can do it at the gym. They can do it in the office. They can do it at home and they don't have to carry around a stupid piece of paper. And I say this to mm -hmm. our customers all the time, like the days of giving a patient exercise on a piece of paper are over. Like they're over. Like yeah. we have technology, let's use it. Yep, yep. I don't get, pa I don't get patients um, sheets of paper. <laughs> I, get, I, have them do it at, I have them do it here. And then I give them one or two exercises that they can work out at home until mm -hmm. they learn it. And yeah. then, and, and, and then they, we're, we're doing it for at least six weeks, you know, minimum to get the muscles, all of your, or your neuromuscular connections firing, the muscles firing and activate it again. And then, and then we use a kinetosense technology, which I know you're using your clinic to have objective measures to see how far they've got. And then we come up with treatment plans you know, every four weeks based upon what we find in the Kinetosense technology. Yeah, and Kinetosense is a great product. Ryan, Dr. Ryan Comio and his team has built great tech. And what's really cool about what they're doing is, you know, they're also constantly evolving. I had a call with uh, him and my team a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, they're, they're also thinking about what's next. And you just got to love entrepreneurs. And he is a chiropractic entrepreneur. I mean, he he uh, he's doing some great work. I, I'm really excited what he's got coming down the pipe. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, you would know more than me. I've talked to him a couple of times, but like, yeah, um, I haven't got in that in depth with him yet. I still have, I'm upgrading to that 360 uh, program that they have. Have you used that? That's yet? Awesome. No, not yet. I got the camera, but I just haven't had time to like. Everything's been going so fast with the, the pandemic because you're just trying to figure everything out and how to pivot, and that um, I haven't had time to uh, download their new, have them do the download and the onboarding. Yeah. I'm excited to use that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, what else? What else you got for us? You've been to the Olympics? You treated at the Olympics? I did. Um, so that's on my bucket list. I told you. My I job there tennis. was, I was, I was called the Chef de Michon it was underneath the International Sports Chiropractic Association, which was kind of a quasi organization related to FIX. Um, mm -hmm. But it was Tom Hyde and, and, and Dale Richardson, Angela Saucedo, myself, Todd Ryder, some other folks that, that organized a group of chiropractors to have a chiropractic sports clinic at the World Olympians, Re World Olympians Association Reunion Center. So in Beijing, at the Poly Clinic, chiropractors were not allowed. So if a, if, if a team didn't have, like if a country didn't have a team chiropractor, mm -hmm. then they couldn't receive chiropractic care, but they could yeah. if they came to the World Olympians Association Reunion Center. So like the U.S. had a chiropractor, it was Ted Forkham. Um, Ted's a great guy, by the way. You might want to put him on, on your podcast too. Um, well, you got you to introduce me to him. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> so, so it was Ted and he, he was taking care of the American athletes. But if you were from Chile or Ethiopia or other countries that didn't have chiropractic resources, you were SOL. And so we were there taking care of the athletes that didn't have access to chiropractic care in the Poly Clinic. And we did it in the World mm -hmm. Olympians uh, Association Reunion Center, which was an experience of, in and of itself. But we set up a, like a little clinic. Oh, and nice. it, was really, it was really cool. And, you know, one of the best chiropractic memories of my life. Really? I imagine. Oh, I, just, I can only imagine right. the that is that, that is what I really want to do. Um, it was phenomenal. And a lot of people don't know that a lot of Olympians, especially from other countries, they're not they're not like athletes in the U.S. where they make millions of dollars. And even a lot of the U.S. Olympians don't make any money. Yeah, it's, and, I mean it's tough. And because they're training all the time, and, all and, the time. and if they're not in a mainstream sport, they don't they don't have access to that care and they need it because they're pushing themselves to the beyond what we believe is even possible to see in every Olympics. 100% and the developed countries, you know, have it or where chiropractic is a regulated profession, they have it. But in many, many other countries, they just don't have access to those services, which is, 
kind of mind boggling to me at this point, given the scientific evidence that supports what we do. But you've got, yeah. you've got politics and you've got- Politics is the problem. You've, it is. A lot of things. You've got people in positions of power that are not putting the athlete first. And that, yeah. is, that is a huge problem. Uh, but um, at least in America, that's not the case. That is true. That is true. Like they have, well, I'm pretty, I, you work there, so you know. <laughs> so that's awesome. Like I'm, that's great. Thank you for sharing that story. That, that's great to hear. That motivates yeah. me a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so what do you, what do you have, what, what's next for you? What's next? I think, you know, for me, I'm like crazy excited about both the online course and the next set of courses that I'll be creating. It's just really fun to, um, to provide content, provide value and get feedback from people after they've watched it and said like, that was meaningful for me, that mattered, that really helped. Um, and, and certainly the tech side of the business, you know, that it's just happening so fast. So we built three apps up to this point, we built the private practice custom app. We call it Canvas, like it's a blank canvas and we customize it to mm -hmm. the chiropractic practice. We built a spine care app to help really put the power back in the hands of the patient when making clinical decisions about what care is gonna be most beneficial for them. And we are completing a functional medicine app. Oh, really? That's the yeah, next thing I wanna add and, to. And we're, we're releasing, we're actually releasing a line of high quality supplements Mm -hmm. And I can't really, I can't share the name yet, but we just, we just uh, looked at the, the logo and the bottle and it's going to be unbelievable. And it's going to be, there's two elements to this. One part is to help chiropractors who don't have a lot of knowledge and education in functional medicine provide it to their mm -hmm. patients because that's us. Mm -hmm. Like we're a rehab practice. We don't really know that much about functional medicine, but a very good friend of mine, Dr. Cindy Howard is a world-class expert. She's unbelievable. Um, and so we're partnering with, with Dr. Cindy and she's, she's building out the, the products. We're private labeling it and we've, we've got our own brand and we're helping other chiropractors like give um, both content, like instruction and content to them so they know how to talk to patients about providing evidence-based functional medicine. But then there's also gonna be an entire B2C piece where we're gonna go direct to consumer. So consumers will have access to this information and have access to the products as well. Mm -hmm. And that, like that is, is pretty exciting for us. Because, you know, in, very similar to chiropractic, there's so many people out there with chronic inflammation and chronic disease states. Systemic inflammation is a huge They need thing. this information. Yeah, they, they yeah. need to have uh, a natural, holistic, evidence-based solution, not drugs. And mm -hmm. everything that we do in, tech, in our technology company is really, really revolves around using the evidence to help our communities be healthier. And there's a big opportunity totally. there because the pharmaceutical industry has literally killed like our, our healthcare system. It's killed it and we need to fix that. Yeah. And, and so our, our technology company is committed to that. Awesome. And then you also have your, I, I really like your, your, the group that you have online, the, the tech group. Can you talk about so that a little got, bit? Yeah, we've got a Facebook page. It's fun. It's called Health Tech Tribe. I've never run a Facebook group before. I have no idea what I'm doing, but um, all we do there There's is- There's a lot like, of interesting things on there. You get conversation between people. It is. I mean, people are sharing really interesting posts. You know, we'll run some polls and some surveys and we'll have some goofy stuff going on too, but it's really an opportunity for people to share ideas and experiences around healthcare and technology. And it's growing. Like, I remember I started, there were like three people. I was like, I don't even know how to get from three to five. Yeah. But you know, you just, to the point that you made earlier, Dr. Dan, about perseverance, you know, we're, we're approaching, I think we have 615. We just, we just um, got like 600. And I think we have like 615 folks and we have other people who are now recommending their friends. Um, we just added like 15 people in the last two days. Oh, awesome. So it's really cool to watch. And what's going to be really cool is when, it kind of like there are some really great Facebook pages in chiropractic, like Modern Chiropractic Marketing by Kevin Christie is a great Facebook page. Mm -hmm. The Forward Thinking Chiropractic Alliance by uh, Bobby Maybe and his group and more and, and a couple others that are on that page. I put all those in the show notes, links to those internet. 
they do a great they do also a great job um and what's cool about that is like the the community starts to just run on itself yeah and i think when we get to about a thousand i think that'll start happening where it, it will just kind of run on its own and sharing will occur on its own yeah, i think right now blue. i think right now the 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 group is somewhat challenged because everybody's still learning about technology. So the thing is people well, learn. It evolves evolve. so fast. Yes. That's the thing. Yep. But, but as they learn and evolve, it'll grow. So I'm excited about that. And I, I think out of the, what has happened, like in the United States over the past six months, like the technology is going to take off after this. Like that, that's going to be, that that's going to be one of the big sectors that is going to boom. Um, and so it's really important for chiropractors and entrepreneurs to, to keep their finger on the pulse of technology. And, you know, even in hiring people, like that's what I was look. that's one of the things that I look for is people that can run technology because if, if you don't have the pulse on it, then you're almost useless in today's like businesses. You're great. Un unfortunately, like you, cause it, it evolves so fast and it's needed and all the younger generations are using it and they can adapt faster than the older generations. So what I really like about my team is like they're young <laughs> and they're teaching me things that I don't, that I don't know. And I can, and I can relate. I'm not too much older than them, but I can still relate. I'm not where I was at before. Like there's such a gap that there was no relation. And so there is no growth. Right in in systems, uh, so I can bring some of the structure, and and then they can bring some of the innovation, and and that's a that's a vision of, of what I have. That's great. What I want. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that you are thinking and talking about innovation because without it, being stagnant <clears throat> is the is the fastest way to practice failure. Like oh yeah. Change, change is a good thing. You've got to moderate change. Your team can only handle so much change. I know yeah. I have that experience with, with yeah. my team. They give me feedback on that. But, yeah. but, but change should be the norm, not the exception. Totally. I totally agree. Because we always have to... <laughs> I just... What did I write this? I wrote this to... I wrote out our... Uh, I wrote... Rewrote a vision, action, and... Vision, vision mission, and action statements for our company since we got about six and a half people working for us now and i'm like jesus i have to manage all this and like i'm pretty overwhelmed and i'm like we need we need something that like brings us all together you know and and that's where it starts mm -hmm. and i was talk i've talked about it for a while but i have as a leader have to do it and so that's what i did yesterday i came up with the vision mission action statement and i got really good feedback on that and um and it's, it's, i'm excited i'm excited about that that's great man that's great. your north that's your north star right yep. that's what's point that's what's pointing out your direction so good for you yeah that's what gives people meaning that's why they're here that's what creates the family that's what creates everything that's the foundation that's the foundation and the innovation 100 there's another one for you instagram <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> roll, bro. i love it yeah it just comes out <laughs> good stuff it's good if i was stuff, trying man. to just come up with that like it wouldn't it wouldn't happen but if i'm just talking <laughs> to somebody i can do stuff like that <laughs> i love it man write that one down too it's a good one Internet. That's Wednesday's post. Got it. Yeah, Wednesday's post. <laughs> All right. Well, we're reaching our hour here, and I just want to really thank you for your time. It's, I know it's very valuable, and you're a busy, busy guy, and um, and your friendship and and your help along the way. And I um, look forward to watching your company and the different things that you roll out grow because I use those, the things that you do, and, and other people that like yourself, um, to uh, mold my vision and to keep innovating. And it's, it's helped me immensely to be around people like yourself and to start this podcast even. It's just, it's, it's really fun because you get to talk to people that are excited about what they do and, and like innovation and, and different ideas because you can get so bogged down by the people that are around you. 
And so you gotta look outside of your, I would say the state, but at least, at least your state, <laughs> um, because there, at least your city, at least your city, then, then your state, then farther than that. But if you can go out and come back with things that people have never, have never seen before, then, then you have that wow factor. And, and that's what people will, that's why people will come to see you. Yep, 100%. And that's how you can help people. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, brother, I want to congratulate you on your practice. You know, it was a big step to go out on your own. It, that that yeah. takes courage, man. And you did it. And you're going to oh, be yeah. wildly successful. And also, congratulations on your podcast, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful <laughs> to be able to be on it. And, and it was just cool, oh. like, hanging out with you and spending time, man. It's been a while. I know. I was excited to catch. I was totally excited to catch up. I mean, yeah, me too. It's... it's We've been, everybody's disconnected like these days because we, we can't travel as much and things like that so it's good to that's what i've found is great about the podcast also that you can just connect with like-minded people and catch up with uh, your friends yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's great